Linda, what is up? It's episode 15. What are we talking about today? Well, we've been talking about me wanting to transition into being my own client. Yes. And now I want to know how to promote the products that I have currently. So we talked about all of the passive income products that I had. Mm -hmm. And when we left off, I saw that what was lacking in my whole strategy was the actual promotion part of everything. Okay. What product? Let's focus on one product. What product do we want to launch or put some effort behind? So I just released the Inner Circle Facebook group videos. So the bundle of videos from the first three months of the group, mm -hmm. which is called Building the Designer's Business. So the actual video bundle. Sales page is up. The videos are up. Now it's just driving people to mm. that. How much is this product? $97. And I, remind me again what the target numbers were to hit. 150 units? Yeah. Okay. How much organic traffic do you get to pre-lance? There's some that go to the blogs. And then from the blog, you get funneled to the email sequence or the freebie to the email sequence. Mm -hmm. So we haven't done, so if you go to courses. Um, down there. And then view all courses and then scroll all the way down. So we need to optimize. Wait, how many this. things do you have? We sell the modules separately for okay. pre-lance. So that one right there. Why is it at the bottom? Because we haven't optimized. We've just put it up. Literally just launched we, yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, so that's the first problem I see is it should be at the top. New products should live at the top because people are not going to scroll down to the bottom. What are these logos here? I see our logos there in Logo Geek. Where I've been featured or where I've been talked about. Okay, you probably need to say something about that. Usually when people put that logo stuff, it, it basically says they're customers of ours. That's usually what it means. So if you were saying Melinda has been featured on mm -hmm. or as seen on, then that's what you need to put in there. Otherwise, it seems like, oh, Logo Geek, the future of all purchased is running, building a business. And what you want to do is create confusion. And you most definitely don't want to create any levels of mistrust from the beginning. Because at any point in the flow from top to bottom, you lose some of these trusts, they're gone. They're gone in less than 60 seconds. Right. So let's make sure you do that, okay? Mm -hmm. There's a video here somewhere? The video is at the bottom. Ooh. So then theoretically I can click on this and watch your video, right? Yeah. Okay. Which is a sample of one of the videos from- Oh, okay. It's not a promo of... video you Right, it's not a promo video. It's actually one from- Okay, bundle. you might need to make a promo video and it probably should live way up at the top. Okay. Because people are short on time. They need to know what it is that you're giving them right away. So I see that there's a lot in here that talks about certain things, but not necessarily. Like what are the three things I'm gonna walk away after I spend $97? What am I gonna get from this? The main thing, what you're going to get is up at the banner. So you're just one course away from running a sustainable design business you love is the main outcome. Okay. So if you scroll down, then the three things should be, I'd have to go back through my own sales page and read it. Mm -hmm. But now that you're asking that question, I'm seeing that it needs to be much yeah. more clear. What you try to do, this happens quite a lot, is that when you build your own stuff, you are so familiar with it that you then look over certain fundamentals, like what is it that I'm getting? Mm -hmm. And the promise, the, the headline is, is have a design business that you're in love with, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now you have to give that almost immediately what those three things are that are going to help me fall in love with my business. Either talk about the pain point or the solution to the pain. And I would make a, a copywriting suggestion, a change here. Instead of saying underpricing projects isn't always a result of not knowing our worth, you should say your worth. Right. You try to right. use the word yeah. you and your as much as you can. It allows them to put themselves into the situation. Yeah. So how do you That's know when... Point you've underpriced a project. Then you then you like, do you just get a gut feeling? Okay, Yeah. so you're fine there. Branding yourself, you, you've done a good job. So just take another look at it and go through with a fine tooth comb and see if you can pick out the little other parts that need some of that attention, okay? Yeah. All right. Now, you literally just launched, but if you don't have this in the right spot and if it's not written in a way with compelling copy and surrounded with amazing visuals, you're gonna lose people. Yeah. So let's talk about other strategies on, on how to drive traffic to, to your landing page. You've uh, undoubtedly have read Russell Brunson's book.com secrets. About half of it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't matter what parts you read, just, just the part that you read that you can apply. Mm -hmm. Are you using certain sequences and the way he 
explains how to set it up? For the most part, yeah, and we've applied his strategy to the pre-lance course, and mm -hmm. so we're gonna be going through this new one and applying the strategy with that. And so what we did with the pre-lance course was had blogs, so I'm gonna be writing blogs and um, that are based off of that new course. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, there'll be uh, a, some kind of a freebie to help lead the customer on to the next part of the journey. So I know that was from Russell Brunson's book. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they're in the email sequence, and so they will be getting uh, an email sequence emailed to them over a course of about a week. Mm -hmm. And at the end, they will be offered a okay. course. This is assuming that people can find this page. Right. Maybe we need right. to focus on that. And we have, so we had started at least the awareness portion with Facebook ads. So we have so done that for pre-lance. So we haven't got to, we haven't done any obviously promotion for the new course, mm -hmm. um, but that would be the plan down the line. Okay. There's a lot of ways you can drive traffic to it. Do you think your audience is aware that they have a problem? Are people typing they, in, I don't have a business I love, or what are they typing in? There's a lot of people, because I also promote these courses in my newsletter. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the people are emailing back to me and we're having conversations back and forth. And what I'm finding is um, they don't feel they have a sustainable business. So they're going through feast, and, feast or famine all the time. Mm -hmm. And they don't love it because they aren't getting the clients they like, they are confused, they don't know if they should specialize, and if they should, they don't know what they should specialize in. Um, they don't know how to brand themselves. That was a really big one. Mm -hmm. And so there was all of these problems which are all addressed in that course. Okay, week. so the people that follow you, who read your newsletter, who correspond with you already understand the problem. Yes. I'm talking about the people who don't know you, who don't follow you, who aren't on your newsletter. Are they aware of the problem? I would think so. They're aware of the problem, but we just have not connected. Okay. Can we validate your gut feeling? Through polls, I don't possibly. Know. Uh, well, if you say in the affirmative they're aware, then I'm curious how you came to that conclusion. There's comments on my Instagram. People not on your own channel. Not on my own channel. Yeah, because your following is finite. Okay. And your newsletter, your, your subs to your newsletter it is finite. And once you blast it out to everybody, the real work is going to begin in converting other people who aren't aware of you at all. Right. Okay, so in the circles where people congregate as creative people running their own design business, where are they and what are they saying and can we just validate that they know that this problem exists and a solution that you provide can can solve that problem that's what i, I I'm, I'm really asking okay so if, do two hundred thousand people know that this is a problem and they're just dying for your answer of it i uh, i would say yes because they're subscribing to you and <laughs> i am well and i am okay. i am your ideal customer really and so if I'm having a problem, mm -hmm. I can either go to you, which I have, I am sitting right here, we are. or I can also solve the problem for myself mm -hmm. and for those who also believe or think the way I do. So there are the people in the pro group, mm -hmm. there are the people who subscribe to your channel mm -hmm. and buy your products and mm -hmm. comment. So I do have a built-in research platform that I go to, mm -hmm. which is yours. So you're, you're using the different groups that we have on our channel to see what the pain points are. Yours, yeah, yours, right. the Logo Eat community, sure. this so design that's how you're life. Validating. Yeah. Okay, so those are your three sources the future, the Logo Geek, and this design life. Yes, unless I go out and seek more. If I, you know, Google other sites or look at okay. forums or comments. The reason why I'm asking this, not, not to be so hard on you, because people are like, go easy on her, Chris. I'm like, I'm, I'm going easy. I just want to separate feelings and emotions from facts and data. Right. If everybody is aware of the problem, selling to them is a lot easier. If they're not aware of the problem, selling, selling to them becomes much harder. You have to introduce another stage to bring them into the ecosystem. Right. So sometimes we make the assumption that, yes, they know, so therefore once I create this thing, sales are gonna be flying you know, out the door. It's just gonna, we're gonna just blow up. And you may be disappointed that that's not the case. And there could be a number of variables in there that they're aware of the problem, they're not aware of you. Mm -hmm. 
They're not aware of the problem. They're not aware of you. Worst possible scenario. Mm -hmm. They're not aware of the problem, but they're aware of you. So there's a lot of different ways to go through this. So if we operate under the assumption that they are aware of the problem, they just need to become aware of you and the solution. That becomes a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So in, in just me speaking off the cuff here, your ad could be, hey, y'all, you know that problem you have? I got the answer. And it's going to be a lot cheaper than you think. Is that but the gist of what you're going to be doing for your ad campaign? To a certain audience mm -hmm. that does know me, I could potentially do something like that. Okay. Because they've, like, the ones that we've talked about that already are aware of me and that do follow me, mm -hmm. that they are essentially further down the funnel mm -hmm. than someone super fresh. So I could do something like that. But now that you're saying this, mm -hmm. they, they know they have a problem. I'm thinking of the people who have no clue. Yeah. They know they have a problem. They don't know yet how to articulate it or mm -hmm. know exactly mm -hmm. what it is. Okay. And that's why I've articulated it in the newsletter and that's why those people are further down the funnel is because okay. we're on the same page. And how many of those people do you think are interested in buying your product? I we only have to hit 150, it's not a ginormous number. Do you think there's 150 there? I think so. Oh, so you already have 150 people. You don't need to run ad campaigns. You just need to have a conversation with those people. It's not like you're it's trying true. to sell 15,000. Your goal is to sell 150. And if mm -hmm. your newsletter subscribers are in excess of that and the dialogue well, how many subscribers do you have to your newsletter? 1,200. So you need to convert a little bit more than 10%. Which feels to me like a it's lot. It's a very high number. So I feel like I would need to get more subscribers to then okay. be able to convert them. So would your strategy be then to offer some kind of free downloadable content to subscribe to your newsletter, like an email tripwire? Yes, and I did do that at the beginning, mm -hmm. and they were, and I realized that it didn't line up correctly with where my newsletter ended up going, but I started the newsletter and it's still there if you want it, but I'm giving away free uh, business card mock-ups that I shot myself. Okay. And so I was oh. sharing what I was doing in my business. And so at I that see. time I shot those for a case okay. study. So I gave that, mm -hmm. but then I'm realizing that that is not in direct alignment with the problem not even close. of what's going on, but it was just, it was the evolution sure. that happened. So at the I time, understand. So now it we works. need to do a new thing. Yes. So what Melinda's talking about, for you guys that are watching, is what you give away has to line up with what it is that's the ultimate product, right? So I was talking to Matthew about this when he said that he's taking a course on how to build an online learning course, that what you post on social, what you write in a blog, should all be driven towards establishing you as an expert at solving a, a specific kind of problem. Everything else is garbage. And then that way, when they know of you as an expert when you have a solution to their problem, the resistance of like, why should I buy from Melinda should be minimized. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Hence, harking back to episode one, the post about the dog doesn't help. We'll get there in a little bit because I've been looking at your Instagram feed, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yes. I will, Would you like to say we'll something? wait. No, I do. Hold, hold on to that but for a little we'll, bit. We'll save that for later. I've been watching it and I've noticed certain patterns, and I'm sure you do too. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll save that. We'll save it yeah, for a little bit later. Yeah. We'll hold on to that just to tease you guys a little bit on this episode. So, if I were to say, of all the many hours of training you put together for this $97 course, what's the most valuable thing in it? As far as the actual content in yeah. there? Yeah. So my whole thing is when we put together the business bootcamp, which you're a part of, I said, oh man, if you just do this one thing or do this thing or this thing, so I have a bunch of things that we can then run different campaigns on. So yeah. if you just learn how to communicate difficult subjects, the art of communication, you can grow. Your business mm -hmm. can radically change. So that's just one part of one module. If you can yeah. learn how to do your bids in a way that is better, then you'll grow there too. Mm -hmm. So in your $97 course, what's the one thing that you think is the most valuable thing? Branding yourself. So as a creative. Personal brand? Well, as a creative agency. So whether that is a personal brand, as a creative service provider. That's the most valuable thing. I believe so because there's things that lead up to it too. So like finding your ideal client, finding your specialty, it all aligns with okay. branding yourself. So <clears throat> under the larger umbrella of branding yourself, what's the most important thing? Because branding yourself is a complicated thing. There's lots of parts and pieces. So let's, I just want to reduce it down to one thing. I found the biggest aha moments mm -hmm. with 
the people who were in the group were when we went through an exercise very similar to one you brought me through before, and it was finding out your unique story and what makes you unique. Because people can go and outline their ideal client all day long, and it all sounds the same, it's nothing that different, but each one of us have a very unique story and a very specific personal brand that we already have mm -hmm. that we might not be aware of. Okay. And that was This is fantastic. Most so you why don't you create some kind of key takeaway deliverable for helping you to find your unique story? And you can position it as such. So you see what we're doing right now is we're taking your course, which is called Building the Designer's Business, which is like, what? That's a lot. And then, well, the most valuable thing is branding yourself as a creative agency. What? That's a lot. So you just keep whittling it down and down into its essence, its core. And you say, if you strip away everything else, I'm going to help you find your unique story because that's going to be attractive to people and that's how you're going to get clients. And then I'm going to fill in all the gaps, all the parts and pieces that you're going to need. And so the beginning of your video to onboard them will start something like this. Hi, it's me, Melinda, and you undoubtedly have seen many videos on the Logo Geek, uh, the future, or this design life, and you're seeing people have incredible success with their business, their creative business, and you want to have the same thing. So you go through the exercises and you try to find your ideal client, but what you realize is there's something missing in all of this, and it's you. What's your take on this? I'm going to help you find your unique story. If you follow this framework, I'm going to give you six prompts if you do this, and this is how I've been able to define myself. Here's what I stand for, and this is how I attract the clients who like me. If you'd like to learn, go ahead and download this free deliverable, or go ahead and download this mini version, and if you find that to be intriguing, consider taking the rest of the course. See you later. Yes. Yes? Now, why are you smiling? <laughs> Why'd you because do that? Because it, you like tightened it up in a nice bow. So I'll send you my bill later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, I just helped you find your story. Yeah? You have to just apply your own framework yeah. to your marketing thing. So this is not unusual for everybody that's watching this and thinks, shouldn't Melinda know how to do this if she's going to be teaching this? No, because we have blinders on when it comes to our own stuff. We can help countless people and this is why your website sucks, you and your logo sucks, but everything else that you do for your clients is fantastic is because we're just all over the place. So what we want to do is we want to commit abstract thoughts, a gut feeling and raw emotions into tangible things by writing them down. It helps if we have a conversation with somebody. It helps if you have a neutral, unbiased party who wants your best interests or has your best interests at heart. If we, look, if we just bounce things off, we will find what it is that we need to do. So again, if you have a friend, a cousin, a brother, mother, sister, somebody who's not so deep into the business of design, run some things by them and listen to their feedback and then you're gonna find your own answer. Mm -hmm. That's what we call or refer to as the sounding board because it's not so much that you need them to give you amazing advice, it's just you need to be able to put words or put your thoughts into words. Because mm -hmm. otherwise it's like this messy chemical soup in your head and you need to be able to do that. Yeah. And that's it. Agreed. Okay. That little piece of content could exist in many forms like once you produce it. It should live on your YouTube channel. It probably should be an Instagram story. Mm -hmm. It probably needs to be in as many places as you think makes sense and ch start chopping it up. Take your downloadable, your email tripwire thing, mm -hmm. turn it into SlideShare, post it onto sl SlideShare and then link to it via LinkedIn. Get this information out there. The Dumb premise, question, what's SlideShare? SlideShare is a way to share a slide PDF thing and they have their own tools. It's specifically just to share slides, oh. presentations. Okay. We've done it. Some of mine have thousands of views and I have no activation, but you will. You'll, you'll have a link and a link to the course and find out more information. Okay. If you also connect it to Wistia, if you post your videos on Wistia, you can get lots of data about who's watched it, how far they've watched it. You can embed certain things. You can get pretty sophisticated with this kind of stuff. And before I shoot myself in the foot, I'm gonna stop talking about all the fancy digital marketing things because that's not really what I do. I'm mostly coming from it from a content side. Ben Burns is the one who handles all the digital marketing stuff. So I know enough just to be dangerous and sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but don't push me too far.
Do you have any follow-up questions to this? No, I have a lot to do. Yes, you do. That's good, though. It's very good. I have a lot of clarity. Thank you. Good. Well, fantastic. Maybe that's all we need to talk about today, then. Thanks for watching, everybody. You know what to do. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell button.